Cool. Um, so if you remember, we have looked about uh, till stored. We saw what are stored procedures and all in the last class. We also looked at some of the this flow control statements while repeat and loop. And we looked at a lot of stored procedures. I had shared the PPT with you people. So you should have, oh, I had also given certain examples in the presentation. I hope you all have gone through them. Today we will look at views, triggers, and events. And if possible, I'll try to cover indexes and cursors as well. So what are views, what are triggers, and what are events? So I'll try to look at that. So why we need views? OK, that is the first question. Why do we need views? And what are views? How do they help us? OK, so assume you have a table. You have a table. But you want to modify the name, uh, one uh, column name of the table. Okay, so like for example, let us say you have a table. The table has two columns. The column name is ID and ID one. But what happened? Due to some reasons, you had changed the name of the column in your code. This is in table, and in code, the column names are different. They are ID and ID two. So if you had to do a get every time from the table, if you have to do a select section, so what you have to do every time? So you have to do select, uh, ID remains same, ID as ID, ID one as ID two. So this way you get the ID two table. Okay, so this is one solution that is fine. You can do this, but let us say there are uh, more such column name changes that you want to do, okay? And you want to be able to, you don't want to remember it every time that, okay, I have to change this table column name to this and this. Okay. So then what you can do, then you can use something called as views. So what views will do is views will take a select query. Let's assume this is a select query. So whatever will be the select query, right? So it is like it is stored inside a view. So views are very similar to select statements. So you take a select statement and convert it into a view. So like, for example, the place where I was saying, I want to change the table name model, what I'll do, I'll write a permanent select query. So select ID, comma, ID one as ID two, I'll say create view. Let's say we'll call it new view. Okay, so what I've done basically, I've created a view whose input is a select statement and the select statement is whatever select as ID one, ID two, whatever you want to do. So this is one reason. Okay, let us say I have other use cases as well. So I have a table. So the table is employee. It has certain columns. So the column is uh, columns are name, uh, role, phone number, salary, and let's say you have another column called uh, rating. Let's call it R. Okay. So let us say you have. Uh, different kinds of people in your company. So you'll have HR, you'll have engineers. Okay. So you don't want to show salary to engineers. Okay. And you don't want to show rating, engineering rating to HR. Okay. So because engineers should not see the salaries of the peers and the rating, let's assume it is visible across everywhere. Let's call, instead of rating, let's call it pull request. How much code they have written, code written. Okay. And HR, they can see salary, but they need not see uh, what this uh, table, this table column that is rating column. So that time, what we can do is we can create a view here as well. So what we will do in that view, so we'll create a select statement with all the columns except the salary column for uh, uh, what do you say for uh, this. Uh, engineers and we'll create another table, another view for HR people. Okay. And whatever permissions you have on a table, right? So like how you can give permission to a table saying, okay, this table can be accessed by these many people. This table can only be accessed by so and so people. Only select queries available on this table to everyone like that. So similarly, you can use same kind of uh, what do you say? You can use same kind of uh, permissions to views as well. Views and tables have almost similar kind of permission uh, privileges. So 
Let's what then what you can do? You can say I'll give permission to this view only for engineers and other view only for HR. The whole table permission it will only be with some admin guy. Okay, so that is also possible. Cool. I'll, let me just show you an example first. So the syntax is very uh, simple. So you say create view, name of the view as and whatever is the select query that you want. Okay, let's just show. <laughs> create view and uh, let's say the name of the view is okay. Let's we should okay, first take a table now. So let's say employee to is a table. Okay. So let's say we have stored proc table. Okay. Use stored proc tutorial. Okay. Cancel table for student marks. Select star from student marks. So you have all of this. So let us say I don't want uh, everybody to see the marks at all. I only want students to see their grade. So you had this thing, right? Where, uh, what was that? So when I was in my sixth, seventh, and eighth, no, so government rolled out a, a scheme where students were no more allowed to see their marks. You only could see the grade. What was it called? And you had FA and FA right? Similarly, thing. So that's it. So now teacher can see the marks, but only students can see the uh, grades that they have got. So then what I could do is I'll create a view, create view as, uh, sorry, name of the view, let's say teacher view, okay, as select star from uh, the table of student marks. So if I do this, this should have created a view now. Okay, so for teachers, we are showing everything, that is fine. So I'll create another table called student view as uh, select, student id comma grade from student marks okay so i have created two views one is student view and one is teacher view so if i do you can use this view like a table only now okay so let's say if i do select star from student view can you see what is the change so now what is happening is only i'm able to see the marks and the grade i'm not able to see the new row extra column that was there. Why? Because as a part of student view, we have not included that new column inside the view only. Okay. But if I do teacher view, so then you can see I have everything. You have the student ID, you have the total marks, you have the grade as well. So this is one use case. And the other use case that I told you, uh, we're changing the name. That becomes very simple now. Uh, so let us say, then in that case, what do you do? Create view, updated table, updated view, and I'll call it as uh, select student ID as a student ID out of this, and then total marks grid. So this view is created. What have I done here? I've changed the name of the uh, view. Okay. So if I do control plus enter, it is saying unknown column student ID. Create updated views from student marks. I see only 10 people today. Okay, sorry, the 18 people. So plus 10 others. Okay. Sorry. So total 17, 16, 15. Okay, there are 15 people today. Okay, I know shows. So now if I run this, I have created this view now. Updated is created. So if I do select star from updated view. Okay. So now you can see the column name has changed from student ID, student to student ID, right? So this is another example. So let us take another use case, okay? So, uh, take example of joints. 
use chimes. So this is the database. So let us say you had uh, two tables here in the, okay, let's see what tables we have in this. Select star from employee. So in this, we have name, ID, address, department ID, office ID. Let's say select star from office locations. Okay. You have ID and you have the addresses. Do we have any employee who doesn't have any office? We also have people who don't have any office. Okay. So now let us assume I wanted to create a joint query where I want to show all the office offices of all the people here. Okay. So in what office they are located, or let us say even if they are not located in any office, I want all the list of employees and whether they are located in any office, and if they are located, what is the location of the office? Okay. So the tables are employee, and the other table is office locations. Okay, so what kind of join are we going to use here? I want, irrespective of anything, I want all the names of the employees. Okay, not just matching people who are not matching. Also, I want because I want to know whether they have been given an office location or no. Okay, so in this case, what kind of join should I use? People can reply in the chat. Should I use a left join? Should I use a right join? Or should I use a normal join? That is inner join. So we are supposed to use left chain. Okay. So why left chain? Because if I consider this table, uh, this employee table as the left side table, right? And office location is the right table. So I want everything from the left and whatever is the matching value of it from the right. Okay. So then what I would do, select star from employee. Okay. And then do left join. What is the table name? The table name is office locations on left dot office id okay not left employee dot office id employee dot office id is equal to you table use kanam kya id just id office locations dot id when enter so now you can see right uh id hata dete hai it's okay don't worry about this id so now you can see all the people who have been given uh, office ID have an address. And there are some people who don't have an address. Okay. So now let us say, actually speaking, these both tables are different, but I want to create one more view such that it shows me this thing every time whenever I do a select star, uh, a view such that it shows me this every time. Okay, so then what can I do? I'll just say create view employee with office as. Okay, and if I hit enter, so this has created a view with such uh, such that every time I do select start from employee with office, the whole query that I had given runs, and then I get the name of the office location that all the employees are there okay select star from employee with office i think this was broken okay it is saying broken duplicate column name address okay Q duplicate column name address. Do you address address? Tha kya? Okay, e -E 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 -S. okay. Select name, comma, ID, comma, department ID, chhodte. say office ID. And uh, we will do. Uh, uh, employee dot address as home address comma office locations dot address as office location column id is ambiguous okay because id is existing in both the tables it is saying it is ambiguous so then what i can do 
I want the employee ID. So I do employee dot ID. Okay. So ये आ गया. अब मेरे को क्या करना है? इसको लेना है. इसको लेके दिग में डालना है. So I'll just do this. And I have to enter. Let's see if it is created. It is created. So now if I do select start from employee with office. You can see right the whole table, the whole joint table that I did that is coming. Yeah, one, two, three, everything, whatever is there, it is all showing. Because whatever join I had done, I am able to see this. So now every time I want to see employees with their offices, I don't have to write this whole query and see it. I can just write a view and then I can do whatever I want. And all the other things also work on this. I can say where. Uh, like how you query normal select tables, right? You can do all of that. If your office location is Bangalore, let's say. So now it will filter in this table that came in Bangalore. Okay. So office location not as going to Bangalore. Only Bangalore and why is there? Yeah. I think so not Bangalore office location and is null. And or so. so now this shows all the people who have uh, what? Then ke pas office location nahi hai, ya fir office location location Bangalore nahi hai. So this shows all those people. Okay. So I want you to understand one thing. So when I created this view, right? So uh, where was where was it? This view. So this view is actually not storing any data or creating anything new. So it is not creating a new table, okay? So what it is doing, it is just storing this query inside, and it is doing some optimization. And whenever you call this view, right? Whenever you do select start from employee with office, so it actually goes to these both tables, office locations and employee, and then it does a query and give, gives it back to us. Okay, this is very important. So if somebody asks you, does view actually create a new table in the backend? No, it does not create. So we need this. Let us. I'll show you one more. You can also create views uh, using uh, this group by command, order by command. Okay. So let's say I have uh, office locations is a table, right? So I want to find out distinct office locations. Okay. Or let's say employee department is there. Select star from employee department. So, okay, but anyway, this will be fine. Let's say we have employees. If you find something, address. This one doesn't have anything special. Let's take some other table. Okay, let us take Amazon table. Okay. So in this table, I have brand, right? So let us do a distinct brand and see how many brands are there. Select distinct brand from Amazon. So this gives me all of these brands, right? So what I can do is I can also create a view on this thing also. I do create brand table, brand view, it's not a table. Create view, brand view. As so now this view is created. I can whenever I go and see what select star from brand view. I can see whatever is this. Okay, so this is the same select distinct query, right? So I can also see a query inside this. So you can use any select statement to create a view. Okay. So and the other thing that I said was you need to keep remember in mind that. So if I do create table, right, a new table is getting created. But if I do create view, and let's say whatever tables that were used here, let's say two tables were used, table one and table two was used. So this create view will not actually create a new table. That I actually go and point to these tables only. So it is actually not having any data on its own. It is querying the tables which we were which were written in the select statement, and it is using that query to get data from these two tables and join and all. 
Okay, but because we have pre-written it, it, it optimizes a few things for us. And it, it, it is very simple to, you know, uh, what do you say? Uh, to a select from this already created view very easily instead of doing a join and then doing a select. Let's say what happens if I insert an item into the select statement, in, into the table. Like for example, let's say I have select star from student. There is nothing. Okay, so now I create a view create view uh, student view as select star student. Okay, so I've done this. The view is created. So if I do select star from student, it is empty, so I get empty. Okay, if I do select star from student view, I'll still get empty. Okay, but let's say what happens if I add a column to a row to student table. So I do this. Insert into student values. Row number, let's say one, two, three. Yeah. Name is uh, Ritik. Okay. Name is Ritik. And marks are 70, 80, 90. Okay. So I've inserted one item into the table, that is student table. So if I do select star from student. You see that one one value that I had inserted is showing up, correct? So this is what we accept. We added a value into a table, and then it is showing up. But let's say I do student view now, okay? So then that also will show me this value, okay? Why is it showing me this value now? It is because we discussed here, right? So create view is not actually creating any new table or anything for its own. This is it is not creating a new table. It is actually pointing to the same table. So if I do an insert on this table, it will show up in the view also. So let's say instead of doing a insert, I did a I did insert into the view directly. Okay. So insert into student we did. Let's say we did student view now. Insert into student view. One, two, three, four key number. And by this time we have the thick name, we have Ankit. Ankit Bora. Okay. So now if I do this, this should also succeed. It has succeeded. If I do select star from student view, it will show two students. Okay. But if I do select star from student, right, that should also show two students because both of them are pointing to the same table. Right. They are showing me same two to two. What do you say? Two values because I've inserted two. Even if I do a delete, it is the same thing. So let's say I do select star from student view. Kya tha na? I do delete star from student view delete from student view delete from student view okay. where roll number is equal to one two three okay so it says deleted so then yeah I, i've deleted from the view but if i do select star from student one two three should be gone one two three is gone right so whatever commands that you can perform on the uh what is here student table that those all the things should also apply on the uh, student view okay so there is no difference in performing those so let us say i removed one column then what happens okay, we'll try we'll try that okay so let us say i had a select star from student is there so i will create one more view and it is execute it doesn't have match marks only let's assume so student view without marks called this go create view student view without marks okay as select roll number comma name from uh, from 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 student so it is created if i do so it will show me those two values okay but if I try to insert, okay, I'm not given a condition here. It should insert null then. Insert into student view without marks. So I can't insert all these four four values because these many four columns don't exist only that it should throw error, I think, here. See, it, it throws an error saying these, these many columns don't exist only. Okay, but if I do these two, it should insert. Oh, one, two, three, four is already there, sir. So I do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it has inserted. And now if I do select star from student view, it should show two values. 
Okay. But if I have a select starting student, the other three will be empty. Okay. These are empty. But if I would have added some conditions to this, right, it wouldn't have added. It will say the condition is failing. Okay. So it is just only the way it looks is different, but whatever operations you do on the view will all happen on the table only. Okay. Cool. This is one thing. And you cannot do update and delete in certain cases. Like for example, let's say I did, uh, we had created this view here, right? Uh, Amazon was there. In Amazon, I had created one view, which was, uh, what was it? Distinct uh, brand something I'd created, brand view. Okay. So let's say I do select star from brand view. So it is showing me all these values. So how is it being generated? It is doing a distinct query on the table. At the table on which it is lying. It is lying on this Amazon table. So now, do you think I can insert an item into a brand? Insert into brand view values. Let's say I call it luxury. Do you think I can add any response from the chat? What do you think is will I be possible to add something inside the table? This brand view table? What do you think so? Okay, Suraj says yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So let us say, okay. I I I okay, you guys have said yes. So I want to ask the same question again. Why yes? Why do you think it is yes? So if I add, so what what does this I told you, right? So this view, what it is doing, it is going to the parent table. It is going to this Amazon table. Select star from Amazon. So it is going to the Amazon table. It is taking all the brand values and then it is getting me the distinct ones. Okay. So now if I add this luxury brand value, where will it put it in the actual table? Right. So where will it put it? So because brand view as a table does not exist on its own. Okay. Brand view won't exist on its own. So brand view is actually depending on Amazon table. But if I add luxury, it cannot only add this directly, right? It needs all of this. Uh, which product has luxury? No product has luxury, right? So it will not be able to add it. Okay. So let's see if I do enter also, it should throw an error. Saying uh, the target table brand view of the insert is non-insertable. Okay. Why is it saying it is non-insertable? Because even if I add luxury inside this, no, there is no way it will go and get added into the Amazon table. Why? Because this view is doing a group by distinct clause and then getting me all the items. Okay. Similarly, we had done a join, right? Inside a join also, I can't add. I'll show you that also. Okay. So let us see. I had done a join here in this uh, in this no employee with office. So even in that, I won't be able to insert anything into the employee with office. Why? Because it is not direct one-to-one -one mapping of a table. It is getting data from two tables. So if it is getting data from two tables. How will, when I do an insert into the view, how will the view know which table I should go and add this item? So that is why you cannot do insert and update into these uh, views in certain cases. It's cases like where you're doing a group by or wherever you're doing uh, 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 these joins, where you're doing a distinct, where you're doing a count, some, where you're doing uh, average, max, and all. No? So in such cases, you cannot use uh, you cannot insert or update into a view. Okay. So I hope you guys have understood this example. Let's look at what all we have for the PPTs. Okay. So uh, not just uh, from, you can also use where condition inside a view, inside a view as well as while creating a view. And then uh, you can also update a view by saying create or replace. Okay. Mm. So this is what I was discussing, right? There are certain conditions needed to be set aside whenever you want to update a view. Like it should not have a group by statement. It should not have a distinct. Uh, the view should have all not null values. The view should not be created using two, three nested queries. The views should be created from a single table. If it is from more table, you don't know where you'll update or where you will do a modification. So there is one more uh, clause that you can specify while doing a uh, what do you say while writing a view that is with check option. So if it is there, it is only applicable to a table which can be updated. So if the view is not updatable, it means uh, this, this cannot be added also. So like if I want to show this to you, uh, 
So this which check is used wherever we have a where clause. So in a uh, what do you say? In a table, like in in a view, if I have a where clause, and if I'm inserting into the view without uh, satisfying that where clause, it will not get added. For example, so let us say I created a view. Mm, okay, so let's say I create this uh, view from Amazon table only. Okay, so use company. Yes, what I do, uh, create view costly items. First, I'll do select. Okay, select star from Amazon. Select star from Amazon. So we are doing this. 20 rows and 10. So these are the items. So let's say wherever the price is more than 1000. Okay. So this view is called costly items. Create view costly items as select star from Amazon where price is greater than 1000 with check. Okay. So if I do this with check option, sorry, with check option. Okay, so now I've created a view, costly items. So if I do select star from costly items, so it should show me only costly items. So there are two, I think one is a TV and another one is a camera. So there's both are costly items. So if I try to add some item which is not satisfying the where condition, right? So where price is greater than 100, it should fail. Saying you cannot add an item which is, it is failing the check. So that is why we say with check, okay? So like if I show, so I do insert into costly items values. So I do 30 is the ID. Name is, um, let's say, Samsung Galaxy 8K TV. Okay. And its price is uh, $200, let's say. Okay. Brand is Samsung. And then category is TV. In stock is let's say okay. So if I try to add this, let's see what happens. See what is it saying? It is saying check option failed. Why is it saying check option failed? Because we said we we added this with check option. So what this does is whatever is the where clause that is specified in the create view that is honored even when we are adding an item. So I was adding an item here, and its price is two thousand. But the where clause says that the price should be greater than 1000. So if the price should be greater than 1000, this won't work. But if I do this to be 2000 now, I can add it. Right? You see that the column has been added. So now if I do select star from costly items, it should show me. Okay, so it is showing two. But let's say I had done, uh, we'll do one more thing create or replace view. Okay, so we uh, will modify the view, but we'll remove this condition. Okay, so now what we have done? We are saying don't add any with check option. So we have modified the view now. So it will still show me same thing. But let's say if I want to add something, right? It, it can add it like that. Let's say I'll add 31 and I'll make it 4K TV and I'll say 200. Okay, so now it should get added. See, even though I said, uh, this view is only applicable for items which are greater than 1000 rupees. I'm still able to add into this view an item which is just worth 200 rupees. Okay, so now when if after adding, if I show, do show now, it won't show here because it is not passing the criteria, right? So, what with check option will do is so, what this will do is whenever we are adding, deleting, or modifying items from the view, it will ensure that whatever operation you're doing that will satisfy this criteria the view where clause criteria okay. dropping the view is again very simple you just say drop drop view for most of the items is the same create table create procedure create function drop table drop procedure drop function drop view so this will also be drop view. so if i do drop view costly item so it is dropped the selects are going to throw some errors in complete costly item does not exist okay so as we discussed, what are the advantages? So we are doing uh, restricting data access because 
if somebody has permission to a view and not a table, he can only access whatever is given by that view. We are hiding data complexity. By complexity, I mean, let's say if a query is very large, we don't want to write that query every time and make mistakes and all. So once we create a view, anybody who wants to run that query can use that view directly. Okay. And so we are also simplifying the commands. We are storing complex queries. We, are, we can rename the columns and we can do multiple views. Okay. So we will start with the next topic that is uh, triggers. Okay, so what are triggers? What triggers help us to do and all? So let us say we have uh, what are the data manipulation commands that we have? Select and then uh, you have insert, you have update, you have delete. Right? So all these are uh, different kinds of DML commands. Select, insert, update, delete. Okay. So Imagine I have a table which is, uh, which is, say, there's a table called orders. Okay. So, in the order, what we have is we have a customer name and product ID. Okay. So, every time, whenever somebody creates an order, let's say this is Apple's table, so Apple will sell. Uh, iPhone devices, right? So let's say this is a table of Apple. So customer name Guru. So Guru, uh, I took an iPhone 14. Okay. So as you have taken iPhone 14. So whenever I order an iPhone 14, what you are supposed to do, you're supposed to go and uh, go to a table. The table is, let's say this is inventory table. Okay. So what does this table maintain? This table maintains the, how much is the inventory count? I mean, how many items are there in the, uh, go down in the stock. You have product ID here and you have the stock. Okay. So the moment I buy this product, the stock should reduce by one, right? So let's say before uh, I bought it, the stock was 90. So once I buy the item, it should go to 89. Correct. So we have to somehow specify to SQL saying, okay, this person has bought this item, reduce its stock to 89. Okay. So sometime after me, what happens is, uh, Suraj buys an iPhone 2. Suraj also buys iPhone 14. So then what happens? Somebody has to again go and look at the stock value and then they have to decrease it by one. They have to make it 88. Correct? Let us say somebody else. Okay. Let us say Sanjay buys an iPhone 13. And uh, we see the iPhone 13. Before it was, let's say, 120. So now it is 119. So there are 119 items of iPhone. So what we are doing? After inserting some value into the table, we want to do some other modification in another table. Okay. So this is one requirement. Let us say I have another issue. Okay. So I'm in a very special, uh, uh, what do you say? It's a very, uh, let's say we are in a bank. So, so you understood this example, right? So every time I'm inserting something into the table, I want to, I'm inserting into the orders. And any order is coming, I want to reduce the inventory so that if the order is, uh, what do you say? If the order is getting created, it means we'll now one more person won't be able to get the item because already somebody has taken. So, this is one example. Okay. So, let us say I, I give you another example. So, let's say I'm in a bank. So, there is this table and uh, it is like this. Let's say. So, I have the account number. And then I have the balance. Okay. So anytime you should go to bank, you tell them you give 500 rupees to the cashier and you tell the cashier deposit this in my account. So what the cashier will do, he will, uh, let's say the account number is one, two, three. So pilot balance was uh, 100 rupees. So now yeah, it went from 100 to plus 500, it becomes 600. Okay. So the balance became 600. So what, what the cashier would have done, the cashier would have run a select statement. So you would have done select not update. Update so balance will be balance plus 500 where account number is 1, 2, 3. Okay. So cashier would have done this. But how do I know who did this? Was it cashier? Was it somebody else? I want to keep a track of all these things. Like if anybody does any update onto this table, because it's very critical, right? Tomorrow somebody may come and say, they'll add this uh, 
so let's say the cashier in bank is my friend okay he is my uncle so i'll what i'll go and tell him i'll give him 100 rupees i'll tell uncle you are my relative so make it 1 uh, lakh make it 1 lakh so my balance was 100 so from 100 it was supposed to become 200 so instead what my uncle will do he'll make it 1 uh, lakh 100 and if i don't keep track of who did this ye kisne kiya we will never know so sometime later they'll come and see they are not able to ma- validate the books and they'll see that somebody has inserted uh, somehow my balance has become 1 lakh extra so what we are trying to do here is we are trying to see who has done the changes we are trying to audit so what do we mean by audit anything happens we have to keep track of who is doing it why they are doing it and all okay so for this what i can do is going back to the first example so 100 rupees were there and 100 plus 100 became 600 so whenever this update happens right so i can go to i can have another table called update table update so in that i can say uh, who did the update the username and then uh, what was the operation account number and then i can have uh, what was the operation select update delete and all okay so operation and then amount okay so then what happens is whenever the cashier adds 500 to my balance the moment he adds that we'll do one more thing what we will do is we will check we will sorry not check we will go we will add the cashier's name name was let's say anuj so anuj was the cashier he operated on account number 1 2 he added how much rupees he added 500 rupees okay so this is one thing so let us say some other cashier comes he deletes my whole account so i say i want to close this account so i delete it so now also even when the row is removed from the table i have to add a check right that who deleted this account which cashier deleted the account let's say it was uh, ankit so ankit 1 2 3 so operation is just directly delete okay account amount was kuch nahi ho so let's say amount was 600 because i was withdrawing all the money when i was doing it amount was 600 so this is one such example okay there can be other things that i would want to do as well like so uh, in atm i wanted to withdraw money okay so my balance was 600 i wanted to withdraw money so before withdrawing money before adding anything into this table i have to check whether balance is let's say i wanted to withdraw 700 so i have to check right is balance greater than 700 so only if the balance is greater than 700 will i be able to withdraw money of 700 rupees right so greater than or equal to 700 so this can also be a kind of check that i want to have so what the use case is coming here is we want certain way by which before doing these operations like insert update delete before or after we want to run some sql statements before doing the operation and we want to run some sql statements after doing the operation the operation can be select select me select to random yes operation can be insert operation can be update operation can be delete okay so what i want to do i want to run these kind of sql statements after the these kind of operations are happening so it is like saying another word of run is trigger so what i want to do i want to trigger this set of sql statements before running the before running my actual sql statement or after running my actual sql statement okay so that is what triggers are okay so triggers are basically a piece of code which is piece of code here i mean sql in in mysql so there are a piece of code that is run before that can be run before you do a insert update delete or some other commands are there shut down log in log out okay so you can run some piece of code before doing the statements or after doing the statements so that is what is sql uh, sorry that is what is trigger so if i show you so the definition is a trigger is a database object which is fired whenever an event occurs so event is uh, these are the examples that i said create alter drop insert update delete okay and there are other database operations that you can work on like log on log off start up shut down and all server okay so whenever any kind of these statements are happening you can do some kind of uh, pre 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 
statement pre operation query or post operation query okay so that is what is basically trigger that is what happens in a trigger okay so the the name of these triggers are uh, like insert before insert trigger after insert trigger before update trigger after update trigger before delete trigger after delete trigger okay so very simple let's go next so let us take a look at few of the examples so the name is again syntax is again very simple it starts with the create if you are doing replace replace trigger name of the trigger and then you have before or after so before or after is do i want to run this before the actual statement is happening or after the actual statement is happening okay and when or do i want to run insert update delete so you can run before insert or after insert before update or after update before delete or after delete okay so these are all the possible ways from which you can run this uh, function that i am saying okay and on what table you want to run so on whatever table this operation is happening is is the operation happening on insert table update table or delete table so on whichever table this is happening i can run on that table and do you want to run it whole together like for a whole uh, what do you say let's say insert update and all right they can be run on one single query or all together right like you can do a insert of one item at a time or you can insert 10 20 items at a time or you can do a update of only one item or you can do an update of all the items in the table so whatever statements that i want to specify i want to run it for one single table one single row each of the row or just for the whole table at a time and you can specify condition as well and when you want to run it okay so let us look at one example mm yeah same nothing uh, no specific thing whatever we discuss it is the same thing okay so let us see what what are we doing here so we create one table and then what we are doing is it's a very simple table we have first name and last name and whenever we are adding any item into the table we are doing an update on the table saying uh, set the full name as first name plus last name okay for all the for each row that is added do this do this thing and we are not specifying any condition here at all there is no when clause okay so let us take a look at this example let's say we use create a new database create database triggers example <laughs> sorry news triggers example okay so now copy that this or whatever the gave us so this table query is very straight forward what does a table have it has a integer id id of type integer and it's a primary key first name is of string last name is of string and then full name is a column but there's nothing there's no condition on the full name okay so if i do create table so the table is created if i do a refresh you should see we have our new triggers example inside that table student is a table okay if i do select star from student nothing is there okay so let us create this trigger so you want to see what this trigger is doing uh, okay before that let me just insert one item without doing any trigger okay so what i do i do select insert into table insert into uh, table the name is student values if you don't have table okay into student values okay so id is let's say one name is uh, sanjay for first name sanjay and last name is uh, darshan okay so now if i do an enter saying uh, issue are okay anybody knows why this issue is coming so the issue is because we are not specified the column names so there are four columns and i am only adding three columns so since i have not specified what is the fourth column it is not taking but i can 
specifically say add it only for three columns. So I'll do first name, comma last name, and then इसको यहाँ पे लगाना चाहिए, ठीक है? तो मैंने add कर दिया इस बंदे को, तो it has been added, one row affected. If I do select star from student, so you can see one name is added, full name, nothing is come. Okay, cool. One second. So now let us create this trigger. Okay. So why is it showing issue here? Because we need to change the delimiter. Delimiter change to dollar dollar and then and then here we end the delimiter with and then and then there. Cool. So if you see, we are doing very simple things here. We all of this is normal. Create trigger name of the trigger. And when is the trigger going to run? After insert. Once you insert it, it is going to run. Okay. And on what table it is going to run? It is going to run for student table. Okay. And then what you're doing for each inserted row, run the statements. The statement is very simple. The statement says update student set full name is first name and last name. Okay. So now let us say create this. It is created. We should say here saying created. Okay. So now if I close this, if I do select star from uh, student Let's say nothing okay so if i do an insert insert into student id comma first name comma last name and then let's say I have values so I do two and uh, first name is Ritik and then second name is Raj. Okay. So I add this guy. Can't update student function in store trigger because it is already used by statement which is invoked, which invoked the store trigger. Take second to insert into student ID values. Not sure why that is happening. Give me a break. Okay. Okay, you can't add. Okay. I'm not the place for where I took this example. Not correct. One second. Okay. So what is saying we already use student table it's saying can't update student and stored function trigger because it is already used by statement which invoke the stored function trigger. Okay. 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 Check this one second. Not sure how it came. Because I've taken the example from some site. Table in okay. give me one minute. Huh? Okay, what? This is not possible in the same table. Let us say we create a different table. Okay. And where we set the full name for the table. So, how would I do that? Uh, date student set full name is first name, last name. So, instead of this, 
I will do add one more table with ID and the full name. Okay, so let's say you cannot add. Uh, I was wrong. The example given in this this PPT is also wrong. Okay, so it does. You cannot add because I'm using the same table on which I'm doing an insert. I'm not. I'll not be able to update the same table. It's like it will go into a recursive loop. So I'll trigger. This will update. So again, because I've done an update again, if something is inserted, it will again go into infinite. You can't you can't use same thing in one other. Okay. So let us say I do a different thing. So what I'll do is I'll create another table. Create table um, student full name. Okay. And we have ID. ID here is a int. And it's a foreign key. So we'll see. We'll define that foreign key afterwards. Uh, and now ID is int. And then I have full name. Varkar. Say to the size 50. Okay. I say foreign key. ID. References. The table name is student. And in that also it references what it references ID. Okay, so created this table. So now let us say I do this create or uh, what was the rename re? What do we call it? Should we replace? Okay, create or replace. So instead of There is not valid at this option. Okay, replace doesn't work. We will call it student name one. Okay, so we need to delete this because I will not be able to add any time anything. It will fail. So before that, I'll delete the this trigger. Drop trigger student name so that this is deleted. Okay, so this is deleted. Let us remove this. Now let's try to create again the same one student row. Insert, I'll do insert on another table here. Insert into um, what is the new table now? Student full name. No? Student full name. Student full name values. ID, comma, uh, string dot. Concat, there should be a function, string function, trcat. Trcat is not a function, string, except it. let's just search for it's concat. Okay, so the function name is concat. So we'll do Concat first name. So, what is the name of the columns in the student table? They are uh, first underscore name, last underscore name, comma, last underscore. Okay. So, now we have created this. So, what we are doing whenever somebody is inserting the, the values into student table, we go to student full name table and add whatever they've inserted as ID and then first name, last name. Okay. So let's say now I do insert into student values. I have to specify ID, first name, all those things. ID, comma, first name, comma, last name values. I mean, three main error student is incomplete of okay, evaluation well, the response. Okay. So let's say ID, let's say I want to add one. One is already added now. Let's say I want to add two. Who do we want to add now? Take it a different thing. So let's say I want to add Sanket Kulkar. Okay. So first name is Sanket. And then last name is Kulkarni. Unknown column, first name, 
in field list. Mm. First name, last name, why? Insert into student ID, first name, last name. First name, last name, eight second, no? So it into student ID, first name, last name, values, concat. Mm. Eight second. Here, first name. One second, give me a minute. Huh? Not sure why it is throwing me an error. Name, first name, value, last name. ID and then contact of first name. Student full name is anyway two columns only. Student and then student full name has two columns, ID full name. So directly adding values into it. So it says ID full name. And one column field. Insert into student ID first name. Last name. The table name is correct only, no? Student first name, last name. Say here you go. So I do full time. So I remove that. Some case will turn me and then I say. Okay. Okay. okay, fine, fine, fine. The issue is coming here. I think we have to do dot. There is a way by which you can specify uh, whatever is the value that is being inserted into the table. You can get to know that. That should be. Mm, not here, not here, not here, not here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Old and new, so the name should be okay. It's just new, okay. Old and new on insert, you will have what you'll have old, no, you'll have new. So let's see, I do let's drop the value first. Drop first your name, okay. Now let's try to create this, say new. Not here. New dot ID. New dot first name. Spellings are right. And we'll do new dot last name. Okay. This we have created. And then let's try to insert now. Insert into student. We have ID, comma, first name, comma. Last okay, yeah, cool. So, what's happening was I was wrong, you cannot directly access them, you have to use new or old. I'll tell you what new or old is in a sometime, okay? So, now what we did, you see, so after insert on this table student for each row, you insert some value into a new table that is student full name, and what are those values? Take whatever is the value that was inserted into the student table. That is new dot ID. ID is the ID that was inserted. First name is the first name that was inserted, and last name is the last name that was inserted. So now, if I go look at the student full name table, no, you should see Sanket Kulkarni's full name should be added. Insert, insert name. Select star from student full name. Okay. So you can see, right? Okay, we are missing a space. So we can modify that thing. So concat, we have name dot first name, name dot last name. Let's say add some space here. Okay. So now if I do uh, drop trigger student name and dropped. 
Let us create it again. Okay. So let's say I add three, four values also. I add that's also work. Okay. So let's say I add uh, values. And then uh, the two is already added. I can't add two again. Three. And then the three will be what? Bharat Kumar. Say we add somebody over comma. It is who oh, name have we not taken any time? Pankaj. Pankaj Raj. Rai. Okay. Pankaj and Rai. Name should be in quotes. So what I've done, I have added two students now. So if I add two students for both the students, the same thing should execute. This trigger should get executed. Okay. So student name is a trigger, and then we are doing student full name. We have explained this plenty number of times. So now if I do student full name, you should see three columns, three rows. Okay. So all those three rows, uh, we modified this thing to have a space, right? So because of that, the space has been inserted. Okay. So cool. You can see these have been added. So let us say I wanted to I want to do some modification before uh, you say um, before inserting into the table, or let's say I want to add. I was saying right, logging statement saying uh, something has happened. Somebody has added into this table. So I can show that quickly. So for that, what we would do? Let's create a new table. Okay. So create table uh, accounts. Then I have one ID int primary key, and then I have a balance balance int, and then um, primary key for that primary key balance int. Uh, what is it? Oh, one second though. Balance int, uh, it is nothing. It's okay. We created one table. So I will create another table. Create table audit history. And this has, uh, let's say, it has the user. So we'll call it uh, one is account details, account ID. So it is of type int. And then you have username, type varchar. And then let's say we have operation. Mm, that's right. Operation. And then we have, uh, let's say, uh, uh, it is also fair care. And let's say we have uh, amount. Okay. So amount is also type integer. And where account ID should be a, uh, what do you say, fraud foreign key. Foreign key with the kind of error, right? Second, now foreign key because there is no comma. Okay. Foreign key count ID references accounts may hide. Okay, so two tables are generated. So one table is called Q references. What am I missing? Where care copy? Okay, say six, six, six. Thanks. Are you here? Yes, references. Name of the table that is Katha uh, count no so accounts, 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 mount int, account int, audit history, foreign key, count ID, references, accounts, 
टेबल की आईडी रेफरेंसेस इज नॉट वैल एक्सपेक्टिंग पोजीशन क्लोज्ड एनीबडी हैज आईडिया व्हाई दिस रेफरेंसेस इज नॉट वर्किंग सेकंड लेट्स क्विकली चेक think well it's okay people forget the uh, syntax sometimes it's fine or in key okay see one here in the this could be essence mein dalna padta hai kya okay fine 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 thank you so much so we have created a audit history table as well so now what we will do is uh, we will write a trigger so what this trigger will do any time somebody inserts uh, updates anything right it will say who updated it okay so how will we do that so what we will do is let's say remove this till limiter let's change so we'll try to create trigger what is the name of the trigger add audit on Uh, let's say we do initially insert only let's say we are creating accounts so the name of the function trigger is add audit on insert and then we say after insert okay on table name is uh, account okay for each row we want to execute begin let's say, let me look at example I'll forget. Okay. Mm hmm. Hey, one second, no. Let's make an example. Mm -hmm. Begin end. Okay, that's what we can begin. Uh, what I'll do? I'll do insert into table. Insert into. It comes into table. The our audit history. Okay. So let's go refresh. Let's take a second. Clear. So audit history. Testing columns. Okay, account ID. Insert into table audit history. Which table is here? Okay. So audit history. We will insert values. So one thing has been done. Account ID. This is the work that is being done. That account ID has been new. So new and old. So new is whatever got inserted into the table that is referred to as new. New dot. So new is whatever got inserted into the table that is referred to as new. New dot ID. तो उस टेबल में उसकी जस्ट वैल्यू आईडी होती है और फिर यूजर नेम सो करंट यूजर नहीं वो कर यूजर कुछ होता है करंट करंट यूजर ओके सो करंट यूजर गिव्स नेम ऑफ द करंट यूजर एंड देन ऑपरेशन क्या चल रहा है ऑपरेशन इज इंसर्ट एंड देन बैलेंस कितना अकाउंट था ठीक है तो ये कर रहे हैं इंसर्ट एंड देन इशू की दिखा रहा है एंड करने को करेक्ट हो चाहिए एंड एंड राइट चेंटर डिलीवर सॉरी ओके तो ये कॉपी करता हूं दूसरे फाइल में ओके तो क्या कर रहे हैं वी आर क्रिएटिंग अ ट्रिगर आफ्टर इंसर्ट ऑन अकाउंट्स टेबल फॉर ईच ऑफ द रो दैट इज इंसर्टेड एट द ऑडिट हिस्ट्री कॉलम से Let's also time a bit alone. It's okay. So we add the ID which was added. Who added it? How much was the amount they added? And what was the type of the command that they added? Okay. So if I press enter, so they should create the trigger. So now, if you see any time I insert into the table, insert into accounts, insert into accounts, accounts here, na accounts. Values. Okay, so let's say first uh, user's ID one is, and in it, how much money is being added? So, I'm adding it. Okay, so I am adding it. Guru Prasad. So, my user ID is what I see. Select current user okay. root. Okay. Find root is that. So now, if I do insert, so I've inserted. If I do select star from accounts. So one null hundred. 
तो अब मेरे को देखना है कि इस, इसको किसने इंसर्ट किया था तो मैं कहा जाऊंगा सेलेक्ट स्टार फ्रॉम ऑडिट हिस्ट्री देखो अमाउंट नल लग गई क्या हमने कुछ गलत लिखा था क्या एक सेकंड देखते हैं क्या ये यहाँ पे ये फंक्शन अमाउंट ओके न्यू डॉट अमाउंट होनी चाहिए थी ओके एक सेकंड तो अब क्या करते हैं इस पे जाते हैं विल डू डिलीट ड्रॉप ट्रिगर एड ऑडिट हिस्ट्री ऑन एड ऑडिट ऑन इंसर्ट क्रिएट अगेन अननोन कॉलम क्या हो गया ये अमाउंट न्यू ओके आई थिंक ये दूसरा कुछ होगा अकाउंट में क्या है बैलेंस है सॉरी बैलेंस ठीक है ओके ठीक है बैलेंस है तो हमने ये टेबल भी बना दी फंक्शन हो गया अब If I do दूसरे यूजर के लिए मैंने अकाउंट में अकाउंट क्रिएट कर रहा हूँ और फिर हजार पे डाल okay, डाल दी हजार पे अगर अकाउंट देखूंगा तो बताएगा एक वाले बंदे पे सो है दूसरे वाले बंदे पे हजार है और फिर मैं ऑडिट हिस्ट्री देखूंगा तो फिर ये बताएगा सो अकाउंट नंबर टू हैज बिन एडेड बाई प्रूट एट लोकल होस्ट एंड इंसर्ट कमांड तो इंसर्ट ही था तो हजार पे इंसर्ट कर ठीक है तो अगर सोचो मैं कोई और यूजर को भी ऐसे ऑप्शन देना चाहता हूँ हमारे पास कितने यूजर्स है तासिफ इज देर तो तासिफ का पासवर्ड मेरे को याद नहीं थ्री फोर ये होनी चाहिए ओके सो तासिफ हैज परमिशन वन टू थ्री फोर तो इसके पास क्या क्या परमिशन है लाइब्रेरी है क्या तो लेट्स आई गिव हिम परमिशन टू डू ये पूरा चला ही गया क्या आई गिव तासिफ परमिशन टू इंसर्ट इन टू अकाउंट ओके ग्रांड Grant uh, all permissions ऐसे कुछ है यार ऑल ग्रांट सेलेक्ट कॉमा इंसर्ट ऑन वट इज द टेबल ट्रिगर्स एग्जाम्पल ट्रिगर्स एग्जाम्पल डॉट अकाउंट सारे को देते हैं ठीक है ट्रिगर एग्जांपल डॉट स्टार टू कॉन सिर्फ एट द रेट लोकल होस्ट ठीक है सो हमने परमिशन दे दी आई लेट एस थ्री लोड तासिफ एक टाइम ही नहीं आता है सच्चे आई थे वन टू थ्री फोर एंटर कर दिया And now, if I show grants, he should have permission to trigger. Not example. Trigger example. The sorry, me. So now, if if I do insert into accounts values, so Tasif क्या करता है? Tasif is another uh, accountant. So he adds user number three with balance two thousand. Okay. No data is selected. ठीक है. Let us check. Uh, use trigger PV करते हैं. Use triggers example ठीक है ये हो गया तो हमने insert कर दी so now if I go and look back in the other table who has inserted uh, user थ्री देखता हूं मैं ठीक है तो user थ्री का बैलेंस दो हजार ठीक है कोई बात नहीं मैं कुछ नहीं करूंगा तो वट विल तासिफ डू अगेन लेट से तासिफ गोस ही मलिशियसली चार ही हैड इज अंकल लेट से ही एड दिस मच बैलेंस टू ठीक है so now it will surely get flagged if you who so then what i can do i can go look at uh, say audit history so who had added ye rup sab ko root hi dikha raha hai kya ek second hmm why is it showing root i think it is running in the current to use context ek second हमने इसको चलाया इस पे इंसर्ट इन टू अकाउंट वैल्यू फोर लोकल यूजर हम सेकंड यहाँ से चलाते हैं सेलेक्ट स्टार फ्रॉम 
table name audit history. Okay, local host only. There is some issue, I think. I'm not sure why, but I'll check it. I'll check it and let you guys know. It should actually come. Somehow it is running in my in my in root users uh, context. Okay, it is not running in Tasif's context for some reason. Okay, fine. It's okay. I, I'll check why it is happening that way. But the idea is same. So since we have written this function, current user should give us whoever is the okay. Okay, 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 got it, got it, got it, got it. So what this is doing is this current user is always uh, okay. mm, so it it actually is not running at that point in time. It is actually running now only and calculating that this current user is local. I am the current user. Let's just check how to do it once again. User in a trigger. This guy also probably should be using yield field. Uh, current user returns account for user who defined the object as given by statement and value unless defined by the scale second case current user returns the object in workers. Select user eight second now. It's okay, fine. I mean, it is the time anyway. It's 20 30 thing. So, what we will do, I'll take a look why it is happening this way. But there should be some function. You don't have to, we don't have to specify the function like this, I think. So, on the runtime, so it is whenever creating this function, it is taking who the user is. But it should not happen that way. It should say who was the user who ran this and then take it. Okay. So, this is fine. But the idea is uh, that uh, we want to add audit on insert. Okay. So let us say I create one more function which says audit on delete. Okay. Create trigger or add audit on delete. Okay. So on delete, what we will do, whatever was the row before deleting, we'll insert that. Okay. So before deleting, it will be old only, old ID. And then the this will be delete. TL delete and then there should be a function called um, current user IPF. this one work i think there is no new one okay so it shall be old This will just be a string. Well, not sure. Wait one second. Let me give it a try. I'm not telling it correctly. Get current So let's try user end. Okay, so we're given who the user is running. So let's do enter. So you created a trigger. So if you tell what this trigger is, this is doing a on delete. If anybody is deleting on accounts row for each delete, we, we add the history in audit saying so and so, so and so, so and so. Okay. So thus Tasif have delete connection. Show grants for Tasif result code.
Okay, so he doesn't have delete. So let's give him delete permission. Okay, so let's say grant delete on uh, reverse example dot star to pass it for the local post. Okay, so again, delete permission. So now if it deletes, it should show. Let's hope it works. This is all the same. So we close this guy's connection. Let us say I first I try to delete and then let us see. So how many accounts you have? Select star from accounts. So we have these many accounts. Okay, let's say I delete. I found out user files malicious. I'll try to delete that number five. Okay. So delete accounts from accounts where uh, where ID is equal to five. Okay. Cannot delete or update a parent row or in key. Oh, okay. I shouldn't have done that. So what I've done is, so in audit history, I've said the account ID is the foreign key. Where, where is it? Audit history account ID is not giving me the information, the foreign key. Okay. So because of that, it is not, we are not able to delete it. Because if I delete this, then it will be stale. So I'll drop the foreign key constraint for a while. So alter table audit history story drop constraint for that audit history IBK. Okay, so drop the constraint. Now it should work. Yeah. So it has deleted the item from this account. So if I do select staff from accounts, it would say, see, account number five is not there. And now if I do select stars from audit log, yeah. so you should see delete has been done by rooted localhost and it has done for user five and this balance is this much. Okay. So now we we'll log in as Tasif and let's see if it correctly updates the user. Two, three, four, enter. So let's say I do, does it? Delete from accounts where ID is equal to two. Okay. No database selected. Example. Okay, so he has deleted. Now let us check what is the status in our table. Select star from accounts. So our user account two is deleted. If it is select star from audit history, yeah. So now it is showing correctly. So if it are used user instead of current user, but now you can see right. So account number two has been deleted by whom by Tasif. okay so you can write as many functions as you want one before delete one before update all of this okay so what is the thing i'll stop here for today there is still i think we, we can cover there are some still many topics that we need to do in trigger we'll do it tomorrow just uh, this is we discussed this this and the example that i was giving for in and out right let me show that okay so you can see uh whenever we are doing insert so before inserting whatever are the value that is called old value and after inserting whatever is the value that is called new value okay on update the value before update is called old value value after update is called new value Delete of okay. this spelling is missing. On delete also, whatever is the old one is called old value, and whatever is the new one is called new value. But few things to note: in insert, you can't have old values at all. Why? Because you are inserting the items for the first time, right? So that is why old values won't be there in insert. They'll only be there in new. Old values won't be there in insert. New values will be there. But in update, you'll have both the values. How can you have both the values? Because you do update on an already existing row. Right, so that is why you have both old and new values in update, and in delete 
you only have old values because once you delete, there will not be any value that is present in the table. So you can access only the old values. So that is why if you see what we did was add audit or delete. After it deletes, we are accessing the old values. We are not accessing the new values because new value won't exist. For you. So I hope this is clear. I'll stop for today. If there is any doubts and all you can ask. I think we have covered enough for today. So.